It's 5 p.m. on uh, Thursday, November 2nd, 2023. It's about 62 degrees. It's too warm for my jacket, so I'm just wearing a shirt right now. And pants, of course, and shoes and everything. But anyway, um, so just checking in on the cows, see how they're doing. Uh, this is my advice video for Zach and Sam. Um, the number one advice is lease your land, don't buy it. If you do buy it, pay for it outright. Don't get a loan. Uh, if you do get a loan, the reason why you don't want a loan for your land is the interest is going to be uh, a burden. And um, I want you to kind of think of the uh, practice of farming as separate than land owning. Those are two different things. <clears throat> so if you could separate that on your mind. Uh, finding land to lease, you just got to talk to people. You may be able to lease land for a song and a prayer. And, you know, maybe just a promise to share some of your farm products with them. The reason why you want to lease is because it's way easier to get into. And you can save your money for things you actually need. Uh, Cow-calf operation is what I'm running here right now. Um, eventually, I want to finish the steer and sell them. That's probably, like right now, the best option to make money with cows is to sell this finished steers after raising them as calves so they live their whole life on one farm and uh, the point is that you need to figure out how you're going to make money who's going to buy your cows who's going to buy your meat if you do meat um, who's going to butcher it for you so figure out the economics of stuff it doesn't matter what you're doing on a farm you need to find a buyer and uh, if that is <coughs> you know the local farmers market go scope it out go check it out Go see what people are already selling and what they're charging for it. And uh, I know, I know some YouTubers they make pretty good money at the farmers market. So, you know, figure out what you can do and how much you can make doing it. Taking care of cows is a lot easier than the other animals, but it's not a trivial task. I recommend finding a mentor, somebody who already does it. There's still quite a bit of grass they missed. Um, and uh, the thing is, is you're probably going to need to find hay. Um, almost definitely you're going to need hay. Uh, protein buckets. When they're eating hay, the protein isn't very high in the hay, so they need protein. And uh, minerals. Some people do minerals, some people don't. Uh, Gabe Brown from North Dakota doesn't do minerals. Greg Judy does. So that's stuff you'll have to figure out and experiment for yourself. <clears throat> Cattle is a very low input um, process when you're rotationally grazing. Uh, preparing the field for grazing so you really got to study and I got the books that Greg Judy wrote and studying and studying and studying and thought and thought and thought but just doing it is where I learned the most okay and right now my philosophy is that when you're rotating the cows you should leave enough behind that the grass recovers quickly that's pretty much the entire philosophy um, a 21 day rotation seems to be best that's a good starting number uh, stockpiles, you want to leave some land untouched so you can put the cows back there when you run out of grass. And I wouldn't worry in the first couple years at least about applying any kind of chemicals to your field. Get a soil tested. If it's low in lime, you probably want to put lime down. You may want to put phosphorus down depending on what the soil test says. And uh, that's probably it. Uh, don't buy seed. Oh, what kind of land to get? So... Ideally, you want silvo pasture. That's trees plus pasture. You want land that isn't used for farming. So if they're growing corn on it, it's not good land for, gra for grazing. Um, the, so ideally, find land that's been used as pasture before. And, uh, you know, my advice is don't raise cows where nobody else is raising cows. You know, like if you're in a town and all they're doing is corn and, and soybean, and then guess what you should be doing, <laughs> you know? But uh, if you want to experiment and try it out and see what happens, go for it. You know, maybe you can run your cows after they harvest the corn um, and the soybeans. You know, maybe that could be your business where either farmers pay you or you pay them to graze on their land after they've harvested everything. You know, that could be a lot of free food there. The clean water is important. We use water from the, the county water supply. Um, the, the county water company. Uh, over here, it's cheap 
they just get it out of a well. They treat it and that's it. Um, I don't know what water prices are where you're at, but um, you do want a clean water supply for the health of the animals. That's something that everybody that I've talked to said that once they switch to using city water, as they call it, county water, uh, the health of the animals just goes up a lot. If they're drinking out of ponds of stagnant water that they've pooped in, that's just not good. That's how you get parasites and stuff. So, um, city water. If you can, sometimes it's too expensive. Cows do drink a lot of water. You probably use more water taking a shower than your cows will drink. How many cows to get? <clears throat> how much it land to get? Um, I recommend starting in the tens of acres. Uh, you can start at one acre if you want. But the issue is, is you want to start off with a low number of cows. Much fewer, like estimate how many cows you can run in the land and buy half. Right. Um, when you're starting out, I think an easy way to start out is you get bred heifers from a local farmer. <coughs> um, he'll be happy to sell you bred heifers. Uh, you don't want to go to the sale barn to buy your animals. People put the worst animals in the sale barn. Um, so get a bred heifers. Those are, those are cows that haven't had calves yet, but that have baby calves inside of them. They're pregnant, right? They're bred. Um, that's a good way to start. Um, by the time they sell them, they should be good to go. Meaning, as long as you feed them something, they'll be okay. You don't have to worry too much about, you know, chemicals and and uh, supplements and vitamins and stuff like that. That's probably a good way to start. And then you, you look at the calves you get. You keep a bowl or two, probably two. And you keep the heifers, grow your herd, you sell the rest, Right. That's what I got for cows. Chickens, I do recommend doing chickens. Chickens is a lot of work, uh, a lot more work than cows. It requires a bit more capital investment uh, in terms of how much cash you need to do it. But the good thing about chickens is they're very predictable. Go to freedomrangerhatchery.com. I'm not sponsored by them. Uh, look at the Freedom Ranger color yield. That's the breed that you should get. They have a little spec sheet on how much they eat and how big they get after so much time. So that'll tell you everything you need to know about how much you need to buy. You're going to buy your feed from a local feed store. You're not going to buy it from Tractor Supply, the feed store. And you're going to buy in bulk to save tons of money. Um, if you get like 100 chickens, you'll probably, I don't know what the numbers were, but probably work through 2,000 pounds of feed, you know. You feed them chick starter grower from birth when you first get them to all the way when you harvest them. If you want to get fancy, you can go ahead and do that. Um, but probably the first round, just feed them chick starter grower. Um, so in my case, like we put the chickens out on the pasture and the hawks got to them. So I recommend um, getting complete cover. So Joel Salatin, he has these things called chicken tractors. Um, it's basically a box with chicken wire on it. And you move the tractors like every day and the chickens move, you put like eight or 10 chickens inside. And that's a good way to do it. You keep the chickens moving. They always have fresh ground. They're distributing their manure. They're, uh, you know, it's just good for everything. They're eating bugs, you know, everything's good. Lots of benefits to chickens. Um, some people have different ideas on how to build those chicken tractors. You need to research it. That's gonna be your major investment. And you're gonna have to like, if you're doing a bunch of batches of chicken in a year, it probably makes a lot of sense to build them. Um, if you're only doing one or two batches a year, you're going to build them and then store them, and hopefully they won't fall apart as they're being stored. So don't store them in the weather. Find a good place to store them where you can keep them safe and use them the next year. Again, you have to find a buyer for the chickens. Um, talk to your uh, chicken processors. There's probably more than a few if you're in a rural location um, in, a, in a drivable distance. And one of them might be willing to take your, like, small batches of 100 or less. 100 or more, maybe, you know, so. Uh, talk to them. Uh, talk to the feed stores. Talk to the, 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 the sale barn. I, you know, it, it just surprises me how willing people are to talk and how much information they're willing to share about this business, especially with a young person. Um, so if you're in your 20s <clears throat> and you call up the sale barn and say, hey, I'm thinking of buying cows. What kind of price do cows get nowadays? What kind of prices can I expect over the years? Oh, they would love to sit you down and have a conversation with doing cows. And then you go to the feedlot, or no, not the feedlot, the feed, um, the feed supply store, 
and they would love to have a conversation with you about feed and you go to the co-op or whatever else and they'll love to tell you about all the things you need for your farm and how you you know how to spend your money wisely um they'll give you lots of good and different advice um they have access obviously to a lot more growers than than you will and they have more experiences too so you probably want to listen to them more than me but uh yeah no i, I totally encourage young people to go out there and take the risk especially if you're leasing the land and uh I think there's a lot of old people that own land. They can't work it anymore. And they're willing to try new things and different things, but they're they're not willing to put the effort in because they just don't have the energy or the time. And uh, so go talk to the people in your community that own land and say, hey, I'd like to lease land and I'd like to try my hand at farming and see what they have to say. Especially if you've grown up in that town and you know the people there and your parents know the people there. That's a golden ticket, man. <laughs> you know? Yeah, see if you can get some land for free that you can use or land that you basically use and then, you know, give the landowner some meat, you know, <laughs> something like that, you know. Um, I, I think I, I haven't really made a ton of money doing this, but to me, the economics works out. The issue is you're going to run out of cash. So you better have that other job that's bringing in money. You don't need a lot of money to make it work. You don't need farm equipment. <clears throat> it doesn't cost too much money. There are some investments you'll have to make and you'll have to calculate the return on those investments. So that's my advice. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.